Hey everyone, this is Math Lesson 8.7. You're going to need orange, like an aqua color, blue-green, and a purple. You should have began this lesson by watching the YouTube video clip of Who Would You Be? It's that little musical number sing, sung by Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. And that little bit should have just helped jog your memory of a time when we've watched it before to try to decide what is happening within a story problem. Well, this time around, I want you to use the clues and think it over, just like they did when they, were be when they were investigating a situation. I want you to use clues and think it over for which one of these measurements you are going to be using in a specific situation in math. So we're going to be looking at situations where it might require you to find the length, where it might require you to find the area, and where it might require you to find the volume. So those are the three areas that we're going to focus on today. Which one of these three would you be in different scenarios? Length, area, and volume. So make sure you get your journal set up like this, and I'm going to talk through it while you do. A one dimension distance or situation looks like a line from left to right or front to back or top to bottom, it's just one measurement. That's why it's one dimension. And what that is, is the length. So anytime when you're finding like a perimeter, you're building lines around a shape. You're adding all the different sides. So that is length, one dimension, length. But it's not always just perimeter. Like the length can just be like, how long is my pencil? How long is the desk? So that doesn't have to be perimeter, but it can be. Okay, and then two dimension are things like, I have a 2D shape, it looks flat, but it's more than just a line. It has two dimensions. It has a length and a width. They can be squares, they can be, even be triangles. But what we're finding if it's a two dimensional shape is the area. And you know to find area, you do length times width. And remember, area, is what is inside. I don't mean inside, I guess that's not the right word for that. It's like the surface, if I were to cover the surface of it. You can't really say inside because it's not three-dimensional, but it's like if I were to paint these objects, how much paint would I need? Or if I was going to lay down sod or grass, how much would I need? That's area, okay? Area is represented with the little tiny baby two, like it's up at the top, it means squared. And then the last one, three-dimensional, this is we've drawn some rectangular prisms, I tried to draw a cube, that's what that is, give it a right cube. And when we're finding three-dimensional, it's the volume. And to get three-dimensional, you have to have three dimensions. So I have length times width times height. And that gets represented with a little baby three because it's three different measurements. So make sure that you get that on your paper. So those are the three things. Who would you be? Are we looking in a situation where you just need one measurement, the length, two measurements, the length and width, which would be area, or three measurements, the length, width, and height, which would be volume. This one is what fits inside. So this is the surface or to cover something. And this is how many things will stack together inside. All right. You can push pause on the video until you get, at, get that caught up. But before, sorry if you already paused, but before you do that, I would take the rest of your journal and I would set up these eight boxes. So what I did was I went from red line to pink line. And I drew a line that went left to right. And then I went all the way down to the very bottom of my paper on both of those sides. And then I split that in half. And then I did in half going left and right. And then I did in half again for each of those. So that's how I got eight total. What we're gonna do in these eight boxes is we're going to be writing different scenarios and we're gonna to have to indicate whether we're supposed to be finding the length, area, or volume. Okay, but get your journal set up first quickly. Make sure you get that eight box chart at the bottom and then you can push play on your video. All right, um, 
let's go ahead and get started with this. So if I were to say on this first one, if I were to write, here's what I want you to find. I want you to write this full thing out. The amount of space inside a box. If I'm going to be finding the amount of space inside the box, what is the measurement I'm looking for? Is it going to be one dimension, where I just find one measurement, two dimension, where I'm covering the surface of something, or three dimension, when I'm stacking things inside? We're going to take the color that you believe it is, and we're going to outline that box inside the box with whatever color you think it is. So go ahead and pick the color right now. Is it one dimension, sorry, two dimension, or three dimension? Length, area, and volume. Which one of these is it? The amount of space inside a box. If you're talking about things fitting inside, then it is the volume. So what I'm writing in this purple box is volume. The key word here was inside. Also a box is three-dimensional. So all of these were clues that should help you know that what we're doing here was finding the volume. All right, ready for the next one? Okay, the next one I'm gonna use is the distance from a porch to a sidewalk. Am I finding the length, area, or volume if I'm doing the distance from a porch to a sidewalk? Take a look at all these pictures up here. If I'm just measuring the distance from one object to another, Am I covering an area, like laying grass down or painting? Am I filling the space with objects? No, I'm just doing one measurement. So that is length. I'm measuring something, one measurement. The key word here, in case you didn't know, was distance. Distance is one dimensional. Are you following along to what we're doing with this chart? I hope so. All right, slide your journal down. Let's try the next one. Okay, how about this one? The height of a flagpole. You know that flagpole that's outside of the school? We're asking us to measure the height of the flagpole. Flagpole. It's just said flagpole. My bad. Flagpole. Think about it. Am I measuring just one dimension? Am I covering something? Am I fitting things inside? I'm just measuring one dimension again just the height. It literally tells you just the height. Sometimes people get confused by that because they think, oh, height, it's got to be volume. It's not true. It's only volume if you're putting things inside of something and filling the space. So this is just length again. All right, let's try another one. Let's do 
the number of tiles needed to cover Not fun. Can you hear that they're mowing the lawn outside? Good times. All right, the number of tiles needed to cover the kitchen floor. Do any of you have tile in your kitchen floor? Maybe your bathroom floors. What do you think that one is? The number of tiles needed to cover the kitchen floor. Let me give you a hint. The hint word is cover. To cover a floor or cover the ground, so like, um, or paint a surface. If I'm covering something, I'm going all along the surface of it. So this one, the word cover was the clue. And this is the area. So you always look for clues when you're doing this. And in order to know how much I need to cover, I have to find the length and the width and multiply them together. So this is two-dimensional because I find two measurements in order to know the answer. Okay, let's try another one. Um, let's do... The amount of water a swimming pool holds. The amount of water a swimming pool holds. What do you think about that one? Is it length, area, or volume? The amount of water a swimming pool holds. Well, it can't just be one measurement because that's just one distance. Are you covering a pool, like the surface of a pool? Or is the amount of water something that's inside of a pool? What do you think? Covering surface or inside of the pool? If you guess purple, you are correct. What is the key word? I want you to think about that for a minute. What is the key word here? The key word is holds. When something is being held or holds, it's on the inside of an object. So how much a box holds or a moving truck holds or a swimming pool or an aquarium or a gallon pitcher or right anything when you're holding that has it's inside. Okay, let's try another one. Ready? The width of a football field. The width of a football field. Are you covering a surface? Are you measuring one area? What are we doing here? It's just the length, which is so crazy because I asked for the width. It doesn't matter. I'm just using one measurement, one dimension, when I asked for width. So even though I'm asking for the width, I just use one measurement, which means it's not area and it's not volume. So then I resort to it being the length, which is kind of the same thing as the height of a flagpole. Flagpole, why do I keep saying that? I think it's because it says swimming pool, flagpole. Sorry about that. Come back over here to the volume one, though. We didn't put that it's three dimensions when we're talking about something being held or holds. So we're going to put that back in there. Okay. We've got two more. You ready for this? All right. The next one. Let's do... Um, the amount... Yeah. The 
the amount of paint needed to cover a wall. What would the amount of paint needed to cover a wall be? There's a key word. The key word is cover. If you said that it is the area, you are correct. It's two dimension because you're trying to cover the surface of something. So this is two dimension. And the keyword was what? Cover. So cover or surface or anything like that. Okay. And then the last one. Let's do this. Um, how much dirt, how much dirt is inside um, I kind of want to say it like how much dirt is inside the, um, like I want to say sandbox, but you don't really put dirt. Oh, garden. How about that? Garden box. How much dirt is inside the garden box? What are we finding if we're finding how much dirt is inside the garden box? I probably gave it away, by the way. I just emphasized inside but yeah, it's purple. Remember anything inside or holds or covers? No, covers. Anything that is inside or holds or space in that is three-dimensional and it's the volume. Okay, so we just did eight practice problems where we were looking at who would you be, length, area, or volume. So hopefully you were following along with that and that it made a lot of sense. What we're going to be doing next is that you need to turn your journal page. Actually, it might be helpful to leave this side out. And you need to go get page 331. It's 331 in your workbook. And you need to get it torn out. Get your name and number on here. And we're just going to quickly answer questions one through eight. And then I think we'll be done with this video. So this is just another quick practice of what is going on. So go find page, 100, page 331 and then push pause on the video until you have it ready. All right, ready? These just kind of quickly go over that length is one dimensional, area is two dimensional, and volume is three dimensional. We, we already talked about that. But for ours, we used, remember, orange for length. Then we used aqua for area. And then we used volume is purple. All right, number one, how much water is in a swimming pool? In, we're gonna use the colors here, in a swimming pool means volume. I'm just gonna write it with my crayon, it's gonna be easier. Number two, how tall are you? It's just one measurement, tall. So this is the length. How much carpet is needed for a floor? Ooh, interesting. You just need to know that a floor is covering a surface. So this one is area. Number four, how far is it from a doorknob to the floor? How far? Or distance is length. Next, how much sand is in a sandbox? The word is in. We had one like this with the dirt. Volume. How much wallpaper is needed for one wall? Wallpaper requires you to know something. When you're dealing with a wall and wallpaper, you're covering 
the wallpaper covers a wall, so it is area. How long is a string? I'm just looking for one measurement. What is it, everybody? Number eight, how much space is there inside a refrigerator? Inside is the clue. What would you think with space inside? Volume. Turn the page. Now we're on page 332. We are going to use our crayons still occasionally, but we are going to go through some of these slightly harder story problems, okay? Because they deal with harder numbers than just basic stuff. So let's go ahead and begin with number nine. It says, solve if possible, write the answer as a whole or mixed number. So you can't leave it as an improper fraction, okay? Also, this person's name on number nine is awesome. It's a girl. Her name is Soldad. Isn't that so cool? Soldad has a, st has a storage box. The box is six and a half inches long, four and three fourths inches wide, and seven inches tall. She wants to run a border around the top of the box. How much border does she need? Ooh, she wants to run a border around the top of the box. So a border is like building a fence. A border would just mean this. I'm going to put, she says around the top of the box, so she's going to go do, 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 here, do, 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 here, she's going to go through the back, do, 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 here, and do, 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 here. So she's got four measurements she has to deal with to get to the top. One, two, three, four. So she's going to be adding these together, right? So she's going to have four and three-fourths, six and a half, and then... Do you deal with the seven? Is she ever going from bottom to top? No. So it's four and three fourths. Actually, where is the best place for me to write all this? Probably just right here. Ready? Four and three fourths plus, what was this length? Six and a half. Plus, then she comes back around the top. So it's four and three fourths. And then she has six and a half again. So this is a perimeter question. Okay, if she was covering the entire surface of the box, like the front, the sides, the back, you know, she's covering it, then you would be doing area. But she's not covering it, she's just putting a border around it. So it's like a fence. That helps me remember that it's perimeter. So I add all these together. Well, guess what? I can't add fractions that don't have the same denominator. So I take the ones that already do, and I'm going to combine those. So let's go ahead and begin. 4 and 3 fourths plus 4 and 3 fourths. Leave them as improper right now until you fix it later. So the, the holes are 4 plus 4 is 8. 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is 6 fourths. It's okay to leave it like that right now because you're not done. Now we take these ones. 6 and a half, 6 and a half. 6 plus 6 is 12. 1 half plus 1 half is 2 halves. Everybody, what's 12 and 2 halves? 13. This is a lot easier than we think then. So then I add 8 and 6 fourths plus 13. So let's just do 13 plus 8 is 21 and six-fourths. And then I have to fix the six-fourths because it, I can't leave it as that. So this is making like a medal of honor. Keep the 21. Fix six-fourths. Four goes into six once with two left over. Do you know what two-fourths is? 
it's a half. So you have the 21, you have the 1, then you fix the 2 fourths into a half. So you have to also keep that fraction, the half. So 21 plus 1 plus a half. So I'm going to wiki wiki what I got rid of. See how that's what's left? 21 plus 1 plus a half is 22 and a half. And because I was not ever multiplying, it's just the measurement inches. Because I'm just adding them together. So it's 22 and a half inches. So how much border does she need? She would need... 22 and a half inches, period. Hopefully that makes sense. It was a lot to work through. See, so we just reviewed how simple it can be, but when we actually put it to use, like, oh yeah, I know I need to find the lengths, but I'm adding them together. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing as fifth graders to challenge our thinking a little bit. Okay, here we go. The refrigerator is five and two thirds feet tall, two and se two sevenths feet wide, and two and a fourth feet deep. So it gives you all of the measurements of a three dimensional object, a refrigerator. Then it says, how much space does the refrigerator take up on the floor? How much space does it take up on the floor? Even though they gave us three dimensions, they're wanting to just know how much space does it take up on the floor. So it's really just area. It's the length and the width. So I need to know, in this situation, the width for sure. And then do I need to know the height, how tall it is? Or do I need to know how far back it goes if I'm trying to figure out what fits on the floor. Not the height. That's how tall it goes into the air or maybe hits a cupboard or the ceiling. So I don't need to know the height. I do need to know how deep it is or how far back it goes. So I find the area by doing 2 and 2 sevenths times 2 and a fourth. Remember when we multiply fractions, you cannot just multiply and do whatever you want. You have to change them into improper fractions first. So I have to go, okay, multiply then add. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 2 is 16 over 7. How did I know it was over 7? Okay, next one, keep the time sign. Multiply then add. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine over four because the denominator is stubborn and it stays. So I have 16 sevenths times nine fourths. Extend the bar. Remember when you multiply, you extend the bar. You look for relationships. Okay, 16 and seven don't have any. What about 16 and four? Ah, they can both be divided by 4. So I cross them out. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. I check for the 9. Does 9 have a relationship with 1 or 7? No. So then I multiply straight across. 4 times 9 is 36, and 7 times 1 is 7. So it's 36 over 7. It says that I can't leave it like that. I need a mixed number. So I take, okay, how many times will 7 go into 36? 7 goes into 36 five times, which would be 35. So that's why I take 35 away from the 36. So you do 36 minus 35, which is 1. So 1 is your numerator, and 7 is your denominator. So it's 5 and 1 7th. It doesn't really look like a 7. I'm going to change that. It's 5 and 1 7th. 
So, but it's area, so it would be square feet. So how much space does the refrigerator take up on the floor? It takes up five and one seventh feet squared on the floor. Okay, we're really trying to solve these more difficult problems. I need you to be doing your best to follow along and think it through, not just copy what we're doing. Think it through. It won't help you at all if all you're doing is copying. So please think it through, and we'll see you in the next video to complete some more.